Faith for Today with Colin Urquhart and Julia Fisher. Psalm 79 is what we're basing our programme or starting our programme in today, Colin. We are, of course, looking for clues that tell us about the attributes of God, his character. Um, We were seeing yesterday how, you know, he wants to readily respond to our prayer. Uh, he, He doesn't want us to be in that distant relationship with him whereby it seems that we can't get through to him or that he is slow to answer. And in verse 9 of of Psalm 79, we read, Help us, O God, our Savior, for the glory of your name. Deliver us and forgive our sins for your name's sake. Now, there's a very, very important truth here. You see, even even when we recognize that we need God's forgiveness and and, um, he does forgive us because if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Um, We think, well, Praise God, he's he's forgiving us for our sake. But actually, ultimately, he's forgiving us for his own sake, for the sake of his name. He's forgiving us so that he can honor the the saving work of Jesus Christ in our lives. He, He is forgiving us so that we can be restored to fellowship and unity with him. He's saving uh, and and healing and forgiving us so that then we can be more effectively used by him to further the work of his kingdom here on earth. So what does that say about how we live then? Are we living, are we reflecting his name in all that we do and say? And are? Well, that's what he would like. I mean, that's what he wants, um, that he wants us to do everything in his name. But you can only do in the name of Jesus what is pleasing to him. You can't do anything in the name of Jesus of which he would disapprove. And um, he is the, the shepherd, isn't he? Psalm 80 speaks um, of the Lord as the shepherd. Um, he is the shepherd who leads us. We saw that in Psalm 23. He is the shepherd who has Uh, his plan and purpose for us. He wants to lead us in the right way. He wants us to fulfill the plan that God has for us. So in Psalm 80, we read, Hear us, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock, you who sit enthroned between the cherubim, shine forth before Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh. Awaken your might, come and save us. Now you see, this is uh, written in a time of, of great need and and uh, not not just personal need, but the need of the nation. And it's like saying, well, Lord, you are our shepherd. You have your plan and purpose. Come and, and, and not only presence yourself amongst us, but reveal yourself, reveal your saving power. Restore us, O God. Make your face shine upon us that we may be saved, it says in verse 3. O Lord God Almighty, how long will your anger smolder against the prayers of your people? And sometimes, you know, when things are getting worse and worse and worse, and we can see that in many ways in our national life today, you think, oh, God, when are you going to intervene? When is there going to be such a move of your spirit that everything changes, the spiritual climate changes? When we see people getting further and further away from God and even legislating against the plans and purposes of God, it, it seems so desperate and, and you know, you want to cry out and say, oh God, oh God, oh God, when are you going to, uh, when are you going to come and establish your order uh, on the earth? When are you going to intervene in some way so that people's hearts and minds will be open to the truth, to, to know who you are? And so there's this great, Prayer, restore us, O God Almighty. Make your face shine upon us that we may be saved. It's speaking, you see, not just at a personal level, but at a corporate level for the whole nation. And again, you know, the the psalmist thinks back to the great things that God has done in the past. And uh, it's as if he is saying, the situation is so dire that we need you to do a great thing again. Return to us, O God Almighty. Look down from heaven and see 
Watch over this vine, the root your right hand has planted, the sun you have raised up for yourself. You know, it's saying, well, we are your people. How long are you going to let us languish in this kind of situation and circumstance? When are you going to intervene uh, on, on our behalf? And uh, the psalmist goes on in verse 17, let your hand rest on the man at your right hand, the son of man you have raised up for yourself. Now that's a very, very interesting verse because obviously it's a prophetic word uh, about Jesus. And this is the amazing thing that you find um, these, these words all the way through the psalms, things that at the time would, would have been... Uh, taken to mean one thing, but as we look back at the Psalms through the ministry and through the uh, accomplishments of, of what Jesus did on the cross, then the whole thing takes on a new significance because the Son of Man, you know, has come and he has suffered and and uh, he has died in order that we might know God and be restored to relationship with him. And yet he has been raised up triumphantly by the Lord. Restore us, O Lord God Almighty. Make your face shine upon us that we may be saved. There's such an intensity about these psalms, Colin. And it seems as though the people swing f- one moment they're praising God, the next moment they've turned away from him. But I suppose that's exactly what we're like too, isn't it? Well, of course, you must remember that the Psalms are there in Scripture for our learning, and therefore they relate to just about every conceivable situation and circumstance we can be placed in. I mean, we've seen, haven't we, as we've gone through the Psalms, uh, and um, we're, we're only just uh, uh, past the halfway mark, but we've seen how many of them are really relevant for today, that the truths that uh, they're expounding are eternal truths. And you see, Psalm 81 uh, begins uh, with another great um, shout of praise. Sing for joy to God our strength. Shout aloud to the God of Jacob. Bring the music strike the tambourine, play the melodious harp and lyre. Um, So you're allowed to shout, you're allowed to have tambourines, you're allowed to have strings in your worship. I just thought I'd slip that in for the benefit of some. Um, And, uh, you know, there's always this sense, you see, that in God alone is our hope. For example, in verse 7, in your distress you called and I rescued you. Now, this is, this is God speaking. Um, I answered you out of a thundercloud. I tested you at the waters of Meribah. That's when everything was going wrong. Everything was going sour, if you like, in the experience of the people. And so the Lord continues, hear, O my people, and I will warn you. If you would but listen to me, O Israel. You shall have no foreign god among you. You shall not bow down to an alien god. I am the Lord your God who brought you up out of Egypt. Open wide your mouth and I will fill it. Now, I believe this is a very pertinent um, section for today. Uh, Many people listening may think, well, wait a minute. Um, We know that there is only one god. We don't have any foreign gods uh, well, there are people that are worshipping other gods now, the, uh, all around us, the, the god of Islam, the, the, um, the, the god of, uh, uh, of the Buddhists, uh, the gods of the Hindus. But, you know, there is a whole modern pantheon of gods, the heroes that people worship, whether they're sporting heroes, whether they're film stars or, or whoever. Um, people make gods out of uh, their ability to make money. Um, even just the pursuit of your personal happiness uh, has become a god. Uh, and so it, it is possible, even in this day and age and in this nation, to have other gods. But those who are going to be faithful to the Lord, he is going to deliver them. This, this is his promise. So he says, 
if my people would but listen to me, if Israel would follow my ways, how quickly would I subdue their enemies and turn my hand against their foes? Now, that's still true for the, for the nation of Israel, actually. I mean, we're living in a time when the news is full of great conflicts that are going on in the Middle East between Israel and uh, its neighbors. Uh, but, you see, Israel as a nation is not really in a place of spiritual obedience to the Lord. And so this is a very relevant word. If my people would but listen to me and follow my ways, how quickly would I subdue their enemies? It, it's amazing how when we're in that place of, of submission to the Lord, then he intervenes on our behalf. And of course, that is a word not only about Israel, it's a spiritual principle. So you can apply it to any nation and you can also apply it personally. And, you know, if only people in this nation would listen to the Lord and follow his ways, then how this nation would be blessed, how God would cause this nation to prosper once again in so many ways and how there would be peace uh, within our borders. Uh, but if we don't do what God says, if we choose to walk in our own ways, then really we're, we're in a place, we place ourselves in a position of conflict with God in some ways. And even though we might cry out to him, I think God quite justly says, well, if you really want me to take your prayer seriously, then why don't you take my word seriously? You've been listening to Faith for Today, presented by Julia Fisher. This program is sponsored by Kingdom Faith. For further information, visit our website, kingdomfaith.com. 